Also, are you ready for the big one? With many of us living on or near a fault line, experts are pushing us all to be prepared. And one of the most important things we can do is have with us what we need to get home in case transportation systems are down. So Deb Muller, emergency management expert and author of Get Ready, showed me what she has packed. Well, my go bag is for getting home after a Cascadia earthquake because I think that's the biggest threat, but it's going to be really hard to get home. So I have the things in my go bag that I'll need to get home, if, even if I'm maybe hours away from home walking. And I have to imagine a go bag is, you know, tailored to each person, but there are some overall things that we're going to need. Yes. What do you decide to put in there? Yes. For a Cascadia earthquake, one of the most important things that really wouldn't be important other times is water because we're not going to be able to turn on the tap and we need water. Mm -hmm. So you can get little tappets of water. In the Puget Sound, you're always close to natural water, so a live straw that filters water is a great choice. I often am far away from home, so I also carry extra water in containers that aren't going to break down in my car and spill all over because uh, I've done that before. The container you just held up, it says 80% full. What does that mean? It means if it freezes, it's going to be a problem if you have it 100% full. So you only want it 80% full. That is, that is true. That is key. The water thing is serious. I actually, my family, when I was a little girl, we survived the Northridge earthquake. And I say survived because our house was red tagged. And we didn't have water for days and days and days. And you don't realize until you don't have it how scary it is for everything, cooking, cleaning. What is in your go bag specifically? The other thing is, if I have to walk home and it takes me hours or a couple of days, I'm going to want to keep myself healthy by having an emergency sleeping bag, emergency blanket, and an emergency tent just to survive and not get too cold and, or wet in the Northwest weather. I'm going to want an emergency poncho to stay dry because it's not like I'm going to be able to go inside and warm up. Some hand warmers and a heavy plastic bag to keep other things dry as well that are in my kit. In your book, do you talk about how to, to prepare these things? Because you know, when I go places and I see these go kits for sale, they cost so much money. Yes, I do talk about how to do it and I break it down into necessary and nice because I have things in my go kit that aren't strictly necessary, but I think I'm going to be darn happy to have them if I'm getting home and it's going to take a while. So that way it makes it easier for people to know what to prioritize and what to maybe do when they have some extra money. And how do you tailor your bag to lifestyle or family needs? I'd imagine putting medication is really important yeah. inside. Yes, glasses, medication, that's really important. The way that I ask people to do it is to think about where you often are, so you kind of have an idea of how far from home you might be, and who is really with you in your car. If your pet always comes with you, you better have things for your pet in your get home kit. If your kids are usually with you, same thing. Is this something that needs to be in the bag, in the car at all times? Yes, absolutely. I, I don't go places without my get home bag because I don't know when a Cascadia earthquake is gonna come and nobody else does either. All the scientists say it could be tomorrow or it could be in 50 years. We really don't know. And it's so key to be prepared and to be safe. Should you have, I guess, the same bag at home. Let's say you need to get to a loved one who might be taken for medical care or something of that nature. Should you have one that you can put on your back and go if you're separated from your car? Absolutely. Again, this is my get home bag that's in my car to get me home. I have a, another go bag in my closet so that if I had to evacuate my home after a Cascadia earthquake, maybe there's a fire, maybe there's some reason I have to grab and go. I know exactly where it is and I can do that too. So that, for two different purposes. That is genius. I hadn't thought about escaping or evacuating in event of an emergency. So that, that is key. The one thing I think that I have the hardest time with when it comes to keeping a go bag is remembering to trade out medications and things that expire. I don't know that there's an easy solution to that. I can tell you I'm a pretty lazy prepper and I know myself well enough to know that I really have to work to do that rotation. 
part of how I handle that is I don't have things in my get home bag that have to be rotated frequently, right? So a life raft bar, they usually last for five to seven years. If I put granola bars, they're gonna be toast because I'm not gonna remember them, but this can last long enough that I don't have to worry about it. And there you have it. So the book is really easy, practical, easy to use, has tips about what to talk to your children about, and even includes tips on how to build a latrine, because you know you're going to need that. All right, coming up next, before our scene of the crime podcasters could leave, we had to ask for an important cold case update. So when New Day continues, an update on the murder of Olympia mother, Karen Bodine.